everybody. I am doing some retroactive vlogging today because yesterday just kind of got away from me. Too many meetings. So, but I wanted to show you because I think it's worth showing anyways. So yesterday I adapted a recipe from this book, The Skinny Taste Fast and Slow. She also has a blog. Her name is Gina Homolka. And a lot of people enjoy her recipes because she takes some of the classics and makes them a little less caloric, uh, finds ways for them to be a little bit healthier. And in this recipe book in particular is meals that can be made quickly or in a slow cooker. So yesterday I was adapting the slow cooker chicken soup with dumplings. And she has a picture there of hers. Uh, but I've been trying to do a lot more with whole plant cooking, um, eating fewer meat meals than we have in the past. And uh, so I love chicken noodle soup is the thing. And especially, well, chicken dumpling soup in particular. The noodles, it's whatever. But the dumplings, so amazing. And it's winter time and there's just something about it. So I wanted to take this recipe and transform it. And I did. And in fact, I can at least show you the leftovers. So here I have a, you can see carrots in there. There's onions, there's celery, there's big, big dumplings. And what I did is I added chickpeas and tofu. And actually, if you wanted to, you could choose one of those. And I'd probably choose the chickpeas. That's a pretty popular thing to do with like a chickpea noodle or a chickpea and potato, or in this case, chickpea dumpling. So my base for all of that, she recommends sauteing your celery, carrot, and onion and garlic before sticking it in the crock pot. I didn't and just cooked it on high so that everything would get soft. But the idea is that your, your vegetables get that kind of softness to them. And if you're using oil, they would get a little bit caramelized, release flavors differently. But in a whole plant way, you would steam the vegetables anyways. You would saute them in water. So I just skipped it and stuck everything in there. Um, she's using chicken broth, but you can also use vegetable broth, which is what we did. She doesn't add a lot of uh, spices to that, but I added, or herbs, I added thyme, sage, um, instead of sauteing garlic, I just used garlic powder and a little bit of pepper. And then there's these dumplings. So, I mean, dumplings, you can go anywhere from water and flour to much more elaborate. And she has a pretty elaborate recipe here that includes egg, um, scallion or green onion, however you call it, a little bit of pepper, uh, chicken broth, which she's got chilled. So essentially what she does is she puts the food in the crock pot, she would go away. If she was coming home, she would have the, the batter ready for her dumplings, scoop it in and let it cook another 30 to 40 minutes. You could also just make all of this on the stove. You could skip the whole crock pot idea and heat bowls of soup up as you want it or in the moment if you're ready to eat, you could boil the dumplings right in. But in this case, so I actually, the other thing is she uses like one cup of flour. I suppose this is where the low caloric comes in, right? I double that recipe because we have so many people, everybody wants extra dumplings. So I double the recipe for the dumplings so everybody can get more dumplings. So she uses a cup of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder that gives them a little bit of a rise so they don't stay all kind of thick and dense. Uh, a tablespoon of fresh chives. I usually just chop up one or two, probably one per one cup. So I had six chives yesterday. I had six cups of flour. Um, she uses a half teaspoon of salt. That's totally fine. An eighth teaspoon of pepper, a, an egg yolk, and a half cup of chicken broth. So here was the thing, right? I wanted to not utilize the egg. We actually have a child who has an egg allergy. It's not the worst. And when it's combined and baked, he doesn't often react. So I looked up the substitutes and decided to go with flax seed and water. So the, the internet suggested one tablespoon of flax seed to three tablespoons of water. In hindsight, because they're just using the yolk, that was probably a little bit too much water. So I would probably go maybe one tablespoon of flaxseed to two tablespoons of water to get that a little more congealed. Um, but you could also utilize arrowroot or chia seed. Um, but you know, there's different websites that talk about what are the different leavenings for? Why would you use 
applesauce instead of egg and, and that has to do with moisture. If you want fluffiness, maybe the aquafaba or baking soda, this kind of a thing. Or they even did like a baking soda and apple cider vinegar for expanding. Very interesting scientific stuff. But anyways, that's what we did. We used a flax seed instead of, instead of egg. And those went in, made sure that it was really good and cooked, especially because I'm adding extra dumplings. And, uh, and then you throw fresh parsley on top. I had actually put dried parsley in in the crock pot because I didn't buy the fresh parsley. But fresh parsley would be great. Uh, salt to taste. And it was just a phenomenal meal. Everybody was super into it. And so I wanted to pass that on, even though I didn't cook with you yesterday. I think it's totally worth it to share what was going on there and at least plant the seed. That there are these adaptable ways that you can work with recipes. And it's an experiment. I was, you know, I was cooking for another family yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope this is good. It turned out to work totally fine. I was really happy with it. So that is maybe what I would end up calling a chickpea and dumpling soup if I were to make it again. Anyways, I hope that's helpful and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.